The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, it's about fertilizer knowledge, what you need to know in order to better utilize the fertilizer that you may purchase, as well as bug control in your garden. And our guest will be new author Gary Polarczyk, plus answering your garden questions. And that all starts right now. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Welcome to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Happy you're with us today. Welcome. I'm your host, Joey Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is about you, for you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. We thank you for tuning in, whether you're listening to us on one of the 15 radio stations across the U.S. that is broadcasting our program, whether it's through our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, under the Season 5 tab at the top of the page, a radio app, podcast replay, or in-studio video replay, Thank you for allowing us to be part of your day. If you would like to get a hold of us to ask us a question, you can do that. Two avenues in which that can be done. You can give us a call at 1-800-927-SHOW. That's 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message. We will call you back. Or you can send us an email, gardentalkradio, gmail.com, gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Well, let's get in the program, Holly. It's about fertilizer. Good fertilizer. Well, I mean, there's synthetic and uh, and organic, and we're going to get into all of this, what might be best for you in your particular situation. Sure. So let's talk about first what fertilizer is. It's an organic or synthetic material added to the soil or to the plant that is important for its nutrient value. So that um, is the definition of fertilizer. And so you can kind of take that. Do you, do you um, need you fertilizer? It, right, do you need fertilizer? So I think the biggest thing is knowing how your soil may be. So if you turn over, say you're going to your backyard, you want to plant a garden, you turn over your soil and it looks gray okay, or full of clay or sandy, then you might want to consider raised beds or containers or uh, even straw bale gardening, something else. Because in that particular situation, I mean, you can't necessarily, you can't look at soil and go... That has a nutrient value of, or that has a pH level of, because you have to have it tested. Right. But you can visually look at it and go, that's sandy, that's clay, that's not good, rich right. compost that would be in a, you know, a bag that you get from the garden center. Right, and something might not grow successfully right. in it. So that's something, that's kind of some general knowledge, general knowledge. You can always get a soil test. If you do turn your soil over and it looks like you know, something might grow in it. Um, But so you want to think about what's in your soil. And the biggest thing, there's three main components to fertilizers. um, And that's the NPK. So if you look at a bag of fertilizer or bottle fertilizer, what have you. Anywhere in the world. About the only thing in the world that's universal is the the three numbers on the bag of a fertilizer. Right. And so this is N is for the nitrogen. And then P is for the phosphorus. And K is the potassium. So nitrogen greens the plant. Especially if you ever go to a garden center or home store and you look for like any sort of grass food. 90, zero, yeah. zero. It's going to have a high N number. That's nitrogen. That makes your grass green. That makes your plants green, whatever. Um, and then phosphorus is for the fruit and root development. So that's the middle number. And then K is just for overall health. And that's the um, potassium. Now these are that's the big three. Now there's macro or there's micro and macronutrients uh, in fertilizer bags, but right. not to the focus. Everybody goes, oh, it's got to have NPK, NPK, NP. It doesn't talk about the sulfur, the calcium, uh, or or the magnesium level, and all that. Right. Now, so Ivy, my, Ivy macro, or, right, oh. Ivory Organics uh, has, has has the uh, added a yeah. couple of added uh, additives to well, their fertilizer. Yeah. So macronutrients, those are the big three: the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But then also calcium, magnesium, and sulfur are macronutrients. So there's like three and there's like three more and that's your combination whatever and you have to have the big three and m- the majority of some trace of the macro uh, the mi- man- mineral and macronutrients 
in order for the plant to grow. Right. If so you're then, lacking in one, the plant's going to have a deficiency and it's going to show signs of not being healthy. Right. So then the micronutrients are things like boron, chlorine, copper, iron, mag- manganese, um, and then zinc is another one, and one called molly, molly denim. I don't know how to pronounce that. So copper is one, and, and what was the... Uh, boron, zinc, iron, uh, chlorine. Chlorine. Mag- 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 manganese. I, Magnesium. Mag- yeah. No, not magnesium. Manganese. Uh, and yeah, so those are the those are the the micro ones, which are important. But if you ever like you mentioned with IV Organics, it has the micronutrients right. as well. Right. Yeah. yeah, it has a, a more in depth balance. IVOrganics dot com uh, for their tree paint and their special blend fertilizer. Um, so you you use a couple of those that is uh, in pond or in, in your pool water, chlorine, uh, raised beds treated with copper. So they are part of the overall, these have to be included in order for life to occur, but not in dramatically large amounts. Right. So one thing I want to touch on, though, is some fertilizer, I guess, vocabulary. Okay. You know, you might, you might be, like, at the garden center, and you ask the dude, like, is this okay? And they're like, it's a general fertilizer, it's good for your vegetables, but you need to side dress it in. And not everybody knows what that means. So what you, what is side dressing? Side so when you take yeah. what you do is you take your trowel, your little hand rake, whatever, and you kind of rake the soil back. Not damaging the roots. Not damaging far the enough roots. away from the roots to where it can work itself, you know, percolate down in, but you're not tearing the roots with your trowel or your hoe yeah. or your shovel. So like an inch or so. Oh, you know, it depends on the plant. Yeah. If it's garlic or if it's tomatoes, you need to go about six, eight inches away from the, the stem. Uh, garlic, you need no, to but go... The, yeah. the depth. The depth, yes, about an inch. Yeah, so you're kind of going to scratch at the soil a little bit, about an inch, but further away from the roots, right. as Joy had mentioned. And then you take and you apply that fertilizer however the directions say. It's what? Most, most important to read the back of the package. So whether you're using organic or synthetic, you need to follow the directions. And here's the other thing. If you get... And, and we've seen this on a couple of different companies. We've gotten three different formulations of fertilizer from a company. And the the applicational rate is different on the back of each one of those, even though they all came from the same company. So just because one bag is X amount per square feet, that doesn't mean the other four or five varieties of that company's is the same because you can add too much. Right. And, and, you, can, I mean, and you can not add enough. It's similar things for different vitamins you take. You know, you might need, I forget what the units are, but whatever, 1,000 grams. A milligram. A mil- milligram. Something like that. Yeah. Per day. And one thing, another thing, you might need 300. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so then another thing that is a, a common fertilizer knowledge or questions is like the fresh manure versus the aged manure. Uh huh. Oh. Uh, the, the fresh manure, there are certain a- animals, their manure can be applied directly to the garden without it burning. There are others, such as horse and cow, that have to age about three to six months in order to get to a breakdown form for it to be used that it won't burn the plants. And when we talk about burning the plants, it literally curls the leaves. It does horrible things. It, it ki- almost kills the plant because there's so much fresh nitrogen that plant's sucking up and it can't handle it so you want to make sure the the what you're using is aged or is the proper manure to use for the garden uh there's you know you got horses cows pigs uh goats chickens rabbits all of those and different it's different for each one of them so you need to do your research we're not going to go through all of them because it, it's not applicable to everybody but um you want to be aware of if it's aged or not. And then with the horse and cow, you need to be aware if the co- how, co- cow or horse was eating grasses that was sprayed with a broadleaf herbicide that could be toxic to your garden as well. Right. Kill, killer compost. Yeah, killer compost. Um, so another thing we want to touch on is a foliar spray versus like a liquid fertilizer. So a foliar spray you spray the leaves and the the upper the tops and the bottoms of the leaves of the plant versus a liquid fertilizer, which you apply to the soil 
uh, li- liquidy. <laughs> like, right, right. You put it at, like you're, like you're watering. Yeah. Now you you want to. There's some fertilizers that are interchangeable that you can dilute down and spray as a foliar feed. However, you want to be aware of what it is because it, some of these fertilizers can burn the foliage and you can kill the plant because it's putting too much on there. The other thing, if you're doing like a compost tea, foliar feed. Uh, where I was going to bring up compost yeah, tea. Yeah. When you, you know, you, the simple form of compost, five gallon bucket, put a scoop of finished compost in it, stir it twice a day for a week, drain off the solids and use the liquids to feed your plants. The finer the mist that you can get on the plant, the better the plant can uptake the nutrient and the the moisture that's on that leaf. Big droplets are going to be, you know, will take a while and then most likely they will evaporate before the plant can utilize a lot of the nutrients that's in that water droplet. Right. I just want to touch on compost tea because um, our listeners may not be familiar. I know like when we started using compost tea, it wasn't super familiar to me. And my family was like, what what kind of tea are you making? Right. They thought we were drinking it. So it is something that you feed your plants. And you feed Joey, the soil, too. I mean, you feed your, yeah, the soil. And you you can use your finished compost. You can buy all sorts of compost tea bags. There's different brands out there. There's all sorts of ways to make compost tea. Um, there's simple ways or there's ways where you have to use, like, the bubbler, aeration, whatever. Right. So whatever is easier for you. So that's just a little bit about understanding the type of fertilizer that you're using, whether it's synthetic or organic. Now, we encourage the organic because it's safe for you, your pets, the environment, and realistically, in the long run, better for plants. But it's up to your discretion. And if you do use a fertilizer that requires an application every so many days, you need to do that because then the plants are requiring that nutrient and if they don't get it, they start to decline in production and health. Well, one thing that uh, if you go to Walton's Inc. for your meat logistics, for your tools, for your knowledge, knowledge for education, spices, for everything from animal to edible, Walton's Inc. has everything that you need in order to get and know what's in the food that you are preparing for your family. Right. The Gardening with Joy and Holly Radio Show is brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Inc. You know you care about what's in your food, but what about the fruits and vegetables, whatever you're canning, preserving, freezing. Um, but what about the meat? At waltonsinc.com, you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat product your way to your high standards. Want to make snack sticks that people will actually like? Walton's created MeatGistics.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished product. Walton's even has a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers, and more to help you go from animal to edible. One-stop shop. One-stop shop. So that's Walton'sInc.com or MeatGistics.com. Well, when we come back, hang around. We're going to talk about how to deal with those bad bugs in your garden. You're listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show, a program to help your garden grow Got better. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. If you love growing tomatoes, then you have to try Tomato Secret by Dr. Jim's. At the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show Gardens, we stand behind Tomato Secret and recommend it to all gardeners who would like to easily grow higher quality tomatoes with more color, flavor, less bugs, and diseases. Tomato Secret is specifically designed to grow high quality tomatoes and it's made with 12 natural ingredients so pure you could feed them to a cow. Simply apply one cup in the hole at planting, then sprinkle one cup around the plant one month later. That's all it takes to grow the best tomatoes on earth. With this product, you'll not have to guess what's wrong with your tomato plants because it has everything they need. Grow the largest and most delicious tomatoes on earth. To find out more about Tomato Secret, visit drjims.com. That's D-R-J-I-M-Z dot C-O-M. Wild Delight has a complete line of premium food and treats for wild birds and other wildlife. It contains the finest ingredients you can feed your outdoor pets. Fill your bird feeders with a selection of Wild Delight's premium quality mixes to have a yard full of colorful birds. Wild Delight is filled with nuts and berries your birds will love and contains no filler ingredients such as cracked corn or milo. Feed the birds the nutrition they need. This keeps your feathered friends coming back year after year. Find out more at wilddelight.com. See what all you can do with a real Tiger Torch. Visit TigerTorchLTD.com for more information. Seed Savers Exchange has been saving, preserving, and sharing heirloom seeds since 1975. 
and today continues to provide those seeds for gardeners just like you. They have over 600 varieties. Visit SeedSavers.org to request a free catalog or to purchase seeds online for this year's growing season. That's SeedSavers.org. Rinse Kit, your hose on the go. Pressurized water at your fingertips. Without pumping or battery, simply fill from your spigot or sink on your way out to the garden, beach, or anywhere. Spray it, wash it, rinse kit. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, internal wood stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. This week's garden tip is brought to you by Yard Glider, the cart without wheels, loads without lifting, hauls more, dumps faster, built to last, and built for hard work. Multiple sizes available at YardGlider.com. That's YardGlider.com. When it comes to weeding, many may just lop off the top of the weed in their garden and say good. However, the roots will redevelop that top growth. The key is to remove all the roots and top growth from your gardening bed. By doing this, using a garden fork, you can get most of the roots out. It is advised not to till in areas where there is a heavy weed population, as the tines of the tiller can chop up the roots, and each root particle can create a new weed and be more invasive than the previous weed that was there. This week's garden tip was brought to you by Yard Glider. The cart without wheels, loads without lifting, hauls more, dumps faster, built to last, and built for hard work. Perfect for homeowners, arborists, hunters, landscapers. Pull it behind an ATV, a lawnmower, or pull it yourself. Multiple sizes available at YardGlider.com. That's YardGlider.com. We've been using a game-changing tool called SeedLinked to find and review our seeds this year. It makes finding the right seeds simple. It is driven by growers' data so you can really see what's best for your location. Check it out at SeedLinked.com or download the mobile app today. Soul Brew Kombucha is founded and handcrafted in Milwaukee, 100% organic, formulated for ultimate health and enjoyment. Find out the benefits of drinking kombucha and where to purchase at MySoulBrew.com or find them on Facebook at MySoulBrew. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Dripworks, Waltons Incorporated, Tree Diaper, Janie's Mill, Phylum Bioproducts, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Nature's Lawn and Garden Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Dr. Jim's, Root Maker. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy that you allow us to be part of your day. Well, drought is a word that many gardeners do not like to hear, or many farmers for that matter, and tree diaper is trying to help and uh, help us out with this. Right. Right. The drought situation is getting worse in the U.S. And to help gardeners, they are offering a 20% off on the garden mats. And so the tree diaper uh, for regions already that are in drought, there they may there may be no rain to catch or not enough. So you would want to use a hose to let the or soak the tree mat in the water for at least five hours, the tree diaper before installation, and then check the soil moisture um, once a week. And it comes with a free soil moisture moisture meter with purchase of fifty dollars or more. And then in the trial in Central Virginia, they only had to water once a year. Now for regions that have a lot of rain or enough rain. It will automatically charge with the rain before releasing it back. Free shipping on orders of $100 or more. You can go to TreeDiaper.com. Um, again, that's TreeDiaper.com. You can find more information out at uh, their Facebook page, Tree Diaper, or you can give them a call at 540-300-1465, and it's 20% off the Garden Mat GM3612 through the middle of June. Well, Holly, let's talk about bug control. She's got her little antennas I'm being up. A, I'm being a bug. Are you a good bug or a bad bug? I'm a good bug. Okay. I good. mean, you probably think I'm a pest sometimes. Well, it so. depends. Uh, we won't get di- <laughs> another time. Not the right <laughs> not, place. Not the right place. Right. Okay. So with bugs in the garden, 
it you don't have to i mean you need a balance you need there's going to be some bad bugs in your garden and there's going to be good bugs and if everything is balanced and you have a proper ecosystem you're not going to notice a whole lot of anything because everything's in check right the good bugs will hurt the bad bugs or eat the bad bugs or something will eat the bad bugs and they may exist in your garden but the ecosystem balances itself out so we want to talk about bug control and one of the things is called integrated pest management and this is a term i've been seeing more and more i don't know if it's just something that i've been noticing or if it's becoming more popular among the gardening community i'm not really sure So, what is ipm what do we got ipm is a pest control strategy that uses an array of complementary methods so it's something like using natural predators and parasites or pest resistant varieties cultural pra practices, biological controls, various physical techniques, and pesticides as a last resort. Right. It's an ecological approach to eliminating those pests. And R I think R a lot of it... Rikon Vitova has uh, those bugs at rikonvitova.com, uh, the, the, the bug farm that can help you right. bring them in and help eradicate the overpopulation of the bad bugs in your garden. And I think a lot of this comes down to the fact that we're realizing that we are, with a lot of our herbicides, pesticides, even um, some fertilizers, can be harmful to bees and good bugs. Right. Well, and we talked yeah. about in the first segment, organic fertilizer and synthetic fertilizer. Organic fertilizer doesn't mean it can't hurt the environment. You can still put too much fertilizer on, and you can still burn, you know, hurt the plants, hurt the bugs, hurt the environment by over-application of it. Right. So what you want to do is you want to, if you say you find a bug on your plant and you're like, I've this, never seen that before. This doesn't look like a happy bug. <laughs> yeah, but also like... now, in, in the defense of the bad and the good bugs, there are some very ugly-looking, scary good bugs out there, and that's part of their defense. Right. So that's the thing. But maybe you see a bug that you've never seen before, and then all of a sudden you check the plant and you see things like holes in the leaves or um, mini webbing or who knows what. Droppings. Droppings or whatever. So the big, the first thing you want to do is use your, most of us carry a smartphone, take a picture of that thing, and do an image search. So you want to do that. And then you, you kind of make a plan from there. Now, if you knowingly have one pest that comes around every year on the same plant, you can use what's called a trap plant. And so what that means is that and you And this can, could be aphids. This could be the squash vine borer moth. This could be... Uh, the the uh, California or the Colorado potato beetle could be a number of things, and some sometimes the trap plant is accidental. Right, like sometimes the aphids might attract themselves to like a thistle, which we have had, which we have had, and then all of a sudden you're just like, well, I'm just gonna leave that thistle because the aphids seem happy on it. And they're, and and and, they're and, not... and, and in, our, in our situation, there was they were you know within two feet of other plants, and they didn't touch those other plants at all, like our whole tomato patch. Right, yeah, so. So that's one thing is a trap plant. You can also do research like if I put basil near this, the pest might be attracted to the basil, but they're not going to bother my broccoli. I don't know if that's true or not. You well, do... you you put it like for, you know, the polyculture method, you put the basil around the squash. So the fragrance of the basil smothers the smell of the squash and the squash vine bore or other insects can't identify that there's a plant there and then they go elsewhere in order to... Re reproduce and lay their eggs right so that's um well let's get back to the you, we've, we've done a google search and we found some information but we're really not sure what to do yeah so you can take that image or you can uh go and send it to your local university extension office you can take it to the extension office or your garden center when you do such put it in a zip top bag and don't open that bag because this is a bug that could potentially infect other plants at that garden center or, you know, at the extension office. Now, when we take, go to your garden center, your independent garden center, the big box store with Ray and paint, he doesn't have a clue what's, what's <laughs> going on. But these, these reputable independent garden centers, they have master gardeners. They have, you know, the bug people, they have people on staff that have, Rachel doesn't know, Stephanie knows, there's a chain of command there. You know, you're, you're kind of mean to Ray and Paint. He probably knows about eggshell white I'm, pretty I'm, well. I'm sure his but wife he, and his family are, are wonderful yes. people, but uh, he doesn't know a thing about gardening. But he knows about like eggshell white. Eggshell white, yeah. 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 What's the difference between white and eggshell white? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, okay. So, but, Office reference for those Ray, who... Yeah. But Ray probably knows that. So anyway, yeah, you want to think about what where that bug came from, what it's doing, you know, figure that out. 
Another thing is before you okay, so say you figure out what this bug is and you're like at the so you do do go visit Rain Paint and he's like, just spray this on your plants and it'll take care of it. Right. You need to think about the impact of whatever you're spraying on your plants. Because it's most likely it's a chemical that's non selective, that's gonna kill anything that it gets a hold of, and now you've eradicated everything in your garden, not good and bad mm -hmm. bugs. Mm hmm So you wanna think about what you are spraying on your plants or around your plants, whatever, how the impact could be. Yes, it may kill whatever that bug is, a potato beetle, for example. Well, here, here but I'll it give, might I'll, also kill all, all the good things. I'll give an example. Seven, the dust seven. It's a neurological powder Yeah. that whenever the bugs ingest it, it messes them up and kills them. Now, that was always the go-to for many people and, and potentially many listeners uh, of age, oh, we always use seven on the, the beans or the, the peas or whatever. Well, it's mostly, it's a lot of people you know, too. Right. Yeah. And, and what happened, you know, if that is what's doing to the bug on a small level, you're not immune to it. You're sucking in some of that stuff as you're applying it to the garden as well. Right. At least the bugs probably die happy. Well, possibly. But but what <laughs> but, I'm saying, yeah. you're breathing that in. Oh, yeah. It's a neurological powder, and it's right. not doing you any favors. And, no. and you shouldn't have to go in your garden and apply some type of material where you have to wear a hazmat suit so you don't get it on you. This is the stuff that you're eating. That's definitely something to consider. So there's a few alternatives. Is Yeah, what are those could, good alternatives? You could, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can spray on your plants, like neem oil, dish soap, essential oils, mixed with water, all of those things that will help get rid of a lot of stuff. And so just with a little bit of time and care and patience, you can do that. Or you can attract good bugs or good predators in, like we do with the tomato hornworm and the birds. Yeah, we put uh, Wild Delight bird seed in the bird feeders. The birds come into the garden, and then they find those bad insects on the tomato, <coughs> tomatoes and other uh, plants and eat them because they're juicy. They're enjoying the Wild Delight bird seed, but they also are enjoying the bugs as well. Right. So that's one option. Another option is to think about Okay, I plant this here every year, and I always get this bug. Rotate. Well, maybe, yeah, rotate it around, swap the, swap the crops, see if that makes a difference. Or sometimes even like with the squash vine borer, if you wait a little bit, it won't, it'll, they'll be past their um, egg laying season, and their larvae laying season. Then and and as bad as it plant. may sound, and as much as you may not want to, skip a year or two from that particular plant that you're having so much difficulty with, and that way the bugs are going elsewhere and then you can come back and plant that with the potential of having success with it without the infestation of that particular insect. Right. That's an option for you as well. Um, something like uh, traps, hormone traps, like for the Japanese beetles or pheromone traps. Rescue Japanese, has that. Yeah. Japanese beetles. You want to, you don't want to put those in your garden. You want to take them and put them on the other corner of your yard. Preferably in the neighbor's yard. So that they stay away from your garden, but they still trap those Japanese beetles. Right. Uh, Rescue has a very nice trap that one can use, but put it away from the problem so you're attracting things away from the problem and not inviting them into the garden to do damage as well as, um, you know, doing uh, doing everything else there. So uh, anything else on that? Just, um, just remember, think about your impact, do some research, look at the whole plant. When you see one bug, Look at the whole plant. See what kind of damage it may be doing. It's going to help you figure out what it is typically. And then think about how you're going to resolve it in the in the best way for your ecosystem. And have the integrated pest management. There's a lot of great information online. Um, Farmer's Almanac website to how to deal with a lot of these pests. Send us an email. Send us an email without having to blast it with uh, uh, who knows okay, what. Yeah, gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Don't have a knee-jerk reaction. There's a bug. Spray it. Do some research to figure out what you got because what you got may be a good thing and not a bad thing. We should all live in harmony with nature. To the best of our ability. To the best of our ability. <laughs> well, another bug, and we talked about that briefly, was the Japanese beetles, and they are going to be flying around your yard if they're not already. And um, weevils and beetles and boars, and again, those Japanese beetles are going to be everywhere. So... Phylum Bioproduct has the answer for you. And what better way to prevent those pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larvae? See, here's the key, the larva stage. You get them before they get flying around, 
and then you've you've prevented the problem. So right. get them while they're in the larva stage. Right. So Grub Gone is an easy to apply granular product that can be spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders, and it also gets the adult ones. It's developed by phylum bioproducts from naturally occurring bacteria. Grub Gone is a non chemical BT product that specifically targets only certain scarab pests. And it's safe to use around bees, butterflies, and other beneficial insects. If you've already got those beetles flying around, then Beetle Gone is the answer to your organic needs and means to get rid of them. Beetle Gone is an organic water dispersible powder that can be sprayed directly on your edible plants. For more information, go to phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. When we come back, Gary Polarichek will be with us. He is the founder of the Rustic Garden. You're listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show, a program to help your garden grow better. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Use coupon code RADIO21 and get 15% off your entire order. Good bugs to eat bad bugs. Rinconvitova.com. Call or email today. 1-800-248-BUGS. You move your lawn sprinklers all over the yard, but you always end up putting them in the same spots. Why not just bury them there? Out of sight, always ready to use, pre-adjusted to water the precise areas you want. Quick Snap Sprinklers makes it easy. In-ground sprinklers without the hassle or expense of laying pipe. Put the sprinklers anywhere in your lawn or garden. Snap on a hose to supply the water. Water on, it pops up. Water off, it drops below ground. You can mow right over it. You can have a buried sprinkler system up and running in just minutes. Each quick snap saves thousands of dollars. They install in minutes and operate for years. Visit quicksnapsprinkler.com. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit proplugger.com. How would you like to be able to fertilize, aerate, and dethatch your lawn using just one product and at the same time improve the soil and root development? Introducing Lawn Force 5, a five-way lawn care kit in a bottle. Lawn Force 5 gives you a lush and healthy lawn you can be proud of. And it takes away the expense of hard work that comes with mechanically aerating and dethatching the lawn. Visit our friends at natureslawn.com to find out more about the amazing Lawn Force 5 product. That's natureslawn.com. Use discount code GARDEN-TALK for 10% off your order. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Have essential oils always confused you like they did me? Take out some of the guesswork with Simply Earth. The Simply Earth Essential Oil Recipe Box will help you gain confidence and clarity in using essential oils to help make your home toxin-free. Here's how it works. You receive the recipe box with four pure essential oils, six recipe cards, and extras. Then you learn how to use your essential oils while making the recipes created by certified aromatherapists. Clear and concise step-by-step directions. Save money and detoxify your life. I got to make fun products that will detoxify my home while also learning safe ways to use my essential oils. The best part is these oils don't break my budget. Simply Earth's essential oils are 100% pure and come from the best farms from all over the world. Using essential oils to support your wellness doesn't have to be overwhelming. My home is one step closer to being toxin free because I made the wax melts and more with the Simply Earth Essential Oil Recipe Box. Visit simplyearth.com to find your recipe box and more. 
The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Simply Earth, Seed Savers Exchange, Quick Snap Sprinklers, Water Hoop, Timber Pro Coatings, Bloom and Easy Plants, Pomona Universal Pectin, Ivy Organics, Tiger Torch, Happy Leaf LED, Seed Link. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. When we have pests in the garden, in our homes, we want to not we want to get rid of them right away. But it's even better if we can prevent the problem before it even exists. And with Carpenter Bees, Rescue has the product that can prevent them from doing damage before they do the damage. Yeah, so Carpenter Bees bore holes and tunnels into wood to lay eggs and care for larvae. The holes and tunnels in the wood invite mold and rot into homes decks, fences, and other wood structures. So spring is the best time to catch the carpenter bees before they mate. So trap stick, you can put that, um, use it throughout the summer and early fall to also control the carpenter bees. Rescue makes a carpenter bee trap stick that is simple to use and pesticide free. You just simply hang the trap stick from the wooden structures you want to protect. You can go to carpenterbeecontrol.com to watch a video about carpenter bees and how to prevent them with the trap stick from rescue. Like all rescue products are made in the USA, so you gotta go to carpenterbeecontrol.com or go to rescue.com. Yeah, <clears throat> keep them from damaging the very expensive wood uh, in your property so you don't have to replace it. And you can do other jobs because uh, you, know, you don't want to waste your time fixing one thing when you can prevent it. Uh, Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Gary Polarczyk is a longtime vegetable gardener, YouTuber, blogger, and author. He enjoys teaching others how to grow vegetables with helpful and straight-to-the-point information. His book, The Modern Homestead Gardener, Garden, Growing Self-Sufficiency in Any Size Backyard, is the name of his book. Welcome to the program, Gary. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Well, we are happy that you've taken time out of your busy day to not only enlighten Holly and myself, but all of our listeners and we'll just get right into it. Uh, you like growing all types of vegetables, but especially tomatoes for sure. What are some of your favorite tomato growing tips? Well, over the years, I changed some of these. Probably aren't the two most exciting tips, but regardless of what you like to put in the ground, organic fertilizers or you know things to help them grow, I found that consistent moisture is the key to growing healthy, large kind of vigorous tomatoes. And when I say that, it's not just kind of giving the deep root watering. A lot of people don't realize that tomatoes send out masses of surface roots. And if you're not watering regularly, those surface roots suffer and the plant suffers. It just doesn't get as big as it should be. So what I really recommend is watering more than you think, watering even if it rains, and keep that top four to six inches of the soil moist and mulch on top of that just keep the water in there it really really makes a difference over the uh over the summer okay great that's a that's a really helpful tip it makes a lot of sense now would you recommend an irrigation system or manual or a little bit of both a little bit of both if your garden gets kind of big it can be a little bit hard sometimes to do a whole irrigation system for various reasons i live on the east coast so we do get a lot of rain um, you know, if I was on the West Coast, I definitely want an irrigation system. You know, optimally, if you can get a kind of regular drip going with a drip system, that would be perfect. But not everybody can do that. I agree. Now, many people don't realize you can use vinegar as a weed killer. Can you tell us how to how to use it the best and where to use it in your garden or yard for weeds or essentially where not to use it, where it might be harmful or not good for your plants? Yeah, so vinegar is a great organic solution. And what it does is because it's an acid, it will, um, you know, kill the leaves just because the, the higher pH or the lower pH, the higher acidity will damage the plants. So there's, you know, there's the store-bought vinegar, the white vinegar that you buy, it's 3% at your regular grocery store. That's a little bit too weak. So you really have to buy 30% white vinegar and you can get that um, online or you can get it at your big box stores. And you want to, Dilute that by a, a half a gallon. So you get a gallon jug of the 30% white vinegar and then add a half a gallon to a gallon. You're trying to bring that down to a 20% solution. It doesn't have to be exact. Anyway, that higher acidity 
will take care of most of your weeds in your garden. Now, the thing is, it's not like, you know, the chemicals that it gets into the roots, it kills all the, the whole plant. You can really use this anywhere that you want um, and just soak the leaves well and it will kill them back. Um, the acidity can get into the soil, make the pH the wrong pH, and then it will kill the root system too. Some other tricks you can do to that when you're making your uh, gallon, gallon and a half solution is you can add in a lot of soap, like a half a cup of soap, um, any kind, dish detergent or anything like that. That helps the vinegar stick to the, to the weeds or to the, the problem plants. Also puts the soap into the soil and that can, you know, kill them much more quickly. You will probably have to do this twice because it's, you know, not a root killer, it's a surface killer. Um, but it's really, really effective. I use it to control clover all over the edges of my property. Um, I'll spot spray in my garden. You don't want to contact the leaves of your crops because it will burn that. Um, but it, it's effective and it, it does the trick. Well, and it's much more of a peace of mind as well, knowing that you're not spraying some chemical that is potentially going to get into the food that you're eating as well. Right. It, right. It, if it drifts in or damages the crops or you ingest it or anything like that. And the other thing, too, is because it's vinegar... Um, you can spray it like around your raised beds. And, you know, if you're really soaking it, people might be concerned, well, I'm putting too much acidity into the soil. Well, a couple of days later, after spot treating and killing off the weeds, you can just throw, you know, a handful of garden lime right where you were spraying and the lime will neutralize the vinegar. So you're not even really damaging the uh, soil permanently or anything like that with the higher acidity. Do you know if it works on Creeping Charlie? Now, is Creeping Charlie, is that like crabgrass? I, I get it's that like, question a lot. It's kind of similar to clover, but it's part of the mint family. And it's really, it has the, when the roots grow, it's like a web of roots underneath the soil. So you yeah. may, yeah, so you may pull up some, but there's still a whole undergrowth. So it probably is not as effective to get into the roots um, just as vinegar. But you can also read, like, you can do the white vinegar, the 30% diluted down. Um, you can add in soap. But then you can also, sometimes you'll read online that you can put salt into there. People put in a cup of salt. And I don't recommend that because when you put in sodium chloride or table salt, you spray your soil. You're not going to be able to grow anything there. But you can substitute that with Epsom salt um, because that's magnesium and sulfur. And over time, the rainwater and stuff will kind of wash that out and you'll be left with magnesium sulfur. Anyway, that greater concentration of the magnesium sulfate, the Epsom salt, can get to the roots of something like that and kill it off. But it's it's a difficult weed. People ask me about um, crabgrass and wiregrass. Um, this is more killing the surface growth and maybe the top half inch of the root system. But if it's a it's a if it's a really kind of vigorous root system, it's it's hard to to treat this way. That's that's very helpful. Now your book is the modern modern homestead garden, growing self sufficiency in any size backyard. Can mm -hmm. you give us a unique tip from it, or why our listeners should check it out? So I think overall, I wrote the book as trying to help the new gardener or relatively new gardeners take on a different perspective. In that you <laughs> that you don't need a book to tell you what to do. Exactly. So what I try and do is encourage people, you know, based on science and the needs of the plants, but encourage people to really keep a journal, um, get their hands dirty, um, plant, you know, you can plant a pepper one foot apart, two feet apart, you can put two in the same planting hole. So I give people a lot of options of how they can plant and grow different vegetables in different ways with none of them you know, being exactly right, because there's a thousand ways to have a garden. And what I hope is the gardener, as the, the reader reads this, they become more confident in going out and not feeling they have to rely on something to tell them exactly what to do, how much fertilizer, distance of, of seeding, distance of transplants and all that. So as a person reads through it, they learn a lot of technical inf information, but I hope to kind of bestow upon them the confidence to just go out and grow. That's great. So we are talking with Gary Polarchek. He's a longtime vegetable gardener, author, and his book is The Modern Homestead G Garden, Growing Self-Sufficiency in Any Size. Now, many people use neem oil for many uses in their garden for pest control uh, uh, often. What are your favorite ways to use neem oil? And not all neem oil is the same. How do you choose what is the true neem oil? Sure. Well, let's go with 
buying the right neem oil. So when you're buying neem oil, you want to buy cold pressed neem oil. That's all the components, all the natural components are, are in there. Nothing is taken out and it's called 100, it's called 100% cold pressed neem oil. And you can buy that in different places. That has the components. And one of the components is called azadiractin, which is a compound that when you spray it onto your vegetables, this is also organic, but when you spray it onto your vegetables, like your um, kales, uh, cabbage leaves and stuff like that, it coats the leaf. And when you get the green cabbage worm or chewing caterpillars come, they chew that, that compound, the azadiractin will kill off the chewing caterpillars in two or three days. And that's how it's most effective for any kind of worm that chews your leaves, regular spraying every seven to 14 days with the neem oil really, really controls them. Like a lot of people, you see that white butterfly um, fly around, it lays the eggs of the uh, green cabbage worm or cabbage looper. And neem oil is a great way to control that. Um, but you wanna make sure you buy the 100% cold press because when you go into the big box stores, if you, you'll see it, stuff that says neem oil. And if you read on the label, it's usually in the bottom left corner of the bottle, um, it'll say hydrophobic extract of neem. And what that is, is all the good stuff is pulled out and you really just have a purified version of neem oil, which doesn't control the chewing instep, insects. It's, it's, in my opinion, no better than using olive oil or any kind of oil. Um, and when you read it, it's confusing to the, to the, to the buyer, to the gardener, because it says it will work um on you know as a miticide or basically smother soft-bodied insects but any any oil does that so you want the 100 percent cold pressed neem oil to really control those chewing worms well you're a modern homesteader many people think that homesteading you have to have a lot of land root cellar canning you you grow everything you eat but that's not always the case now what is modern homesteading Modern homesteading is really a starting point. It's for somebody who wants to learn the skills or add more to being self-sufficient. You know, in, in modern life, we have to pay the bills. We need uh, health insurance, all that kind of stuff. So you do often have to juggle raising your kids, having a job. So the modern homestead is more of learning the skills at your own pace with whatever size backyard you have, but also a perspective where you begin to rely less on the grocery store and maybe you just start with herbs on the window, learn that, and then you move to a balcony and then you're able to get more land and you just kind of grow from there. But it's really taking your home and whatever space you have and using what you have available to help just be more self-sufficient with within your food supply. So you don't have to go to the grocery store every time. Maybe you cut back on the grocery store visit 10% or 20%. But you can grow. So you don't have to kind of throw everything away, get that 10 acres, move off grid, do homeschooling and do all that stuff. That's just too overwhelming. It's just a good way to start and then see where life takes you in five years or 10 years. Yeah, I definitely agree. You have to, you have to start somewhere and uh, start within what you can. So how can people find out more about you and your information in your book? So you can, um, really search uh the rusted garden it's r-u-s-t-e-d sometimes people think i say rustic but the rusted garden will bring up my youtube channel all my social media um and then you can you can find the book usually under that too um or just search my name gary Polarchik, and you'll just see all the stuff i love doing with uh vegetable gardening really i've been doing this for maybe 15 years now with social media well, Gary, we greatly appreciate the time and the knowledge you not only shared with Holly and myself, but all of our listeners across the country. Thank you. And when we come back, it's going to be your garden questions, our garden answers. You're listening to The Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at dripworks.com. The Water Hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush. Conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The Water Hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. Straight from the farm, fields, and briar patch, 
Piper and Leaf Artisan Tea is a tea like you've never imagined it. Get our award-winning tea delivered right to your front door and become part of the Piper and Leaf family. Free shipping over $75 at piperandleaf.com. We know that you appreciate the value of a beautifully landscaped yard, but tackling such a project yourself can seem way too complicated, right? Bloomin' Easy Plants are the answer. Their plants are low maintenance and offer exceptional beauty and color for your yard. Plus, they offer free seasonal care reminders with simple how-to videos tailored to the plants that you choose. With Bloomin' Easy on your side, creating the yard that you've always wanted becomes as easy as plant, water, and relax. Check them out at your local garden center or by visiting bloomingeasyplants.com. Chip Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Chip Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ChipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Protect your plants against damage with a 3-in-1 plant guard and special blend fertilizer. Visit IVOrganics.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Chapin has the tools to help you this season. We have a wide range of sprayers to help you control pests, weeds, and fertilize your plants. From handheld to ATV sprayers, we have it all. Use our broadcast spreader to feed and seed your green spaces. Water and feed at the same time with our fertilizer injectors. Find Chapin equipment at major home improvement and hardware stores and online at ChapinMFG.com. Chapin, cover more ground. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Blue Ribbon Organics, Naturally Green Products, Ironwood Tool Company, Easy Step Products, Rinse Kit, Soul Brew Kabucha, Wild Delight, Rycon Vitova, Chip Drop, Bailbuster.com. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Time for your questions or answers. If you've got a question, you can submit that to us at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to speak with us, us directly, 1-800-927-SHOW. Toll free, coast to coast, 1-800-927-SHOW. Had a number of questions come in, Holly. We'll get through what we can get through to the top of the hour. Okay, so I have a parsnip plant I didn't harvest last year, and it's now going to seed. I'm considering letting it go to seed and leaving that area of garden for parsnips. Should I do that, or can they become a problem plant taking over? Well, you can let it go to seed. We did this about uh, five, ten years ago. You can let it go to seed. It will look like a miniature palm tree with several thousand seeds coming off of it. And it's not a bad thing. You can catch the seeds early on you know, when they're in the mature just before they drop. And if you don't get them, you're going to have a whole bunch of parsnips coming up next year. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. So uh, if you don't like where they have fallen and they're germinating, you can always just extract them out and throw them in the compost pile. But you can save quite a bit of seeds. And many people think that parsnips are only good for one year. However, we saved seeds uh, five years out, and they were still very good. Uh, so you can certainly do that. Here's a canning question for you, Holly. I see a lot of pictures on social media with the canning jars after their process turned upside down on their lids. Why is this done, and is this necessary? Okay, so first of all, it is not necessary, and you should not do it. Um, back in the day, they used to put wax, paraffin wax, at the top of their canning jars, and then when they got out of the canner, they would flip it over because it would help the wax seal do its thing, whatever. I don't know why people still do it. I don't know who's teaching people to do that. It's not good. You don't want to do it. You just want to pull them out, leave them right side up, let them ping, let them seal, do their thing. Don't turn them over. It's not going to guarantee a better seal. We're not using wax anymore. It, it can also it inhibit. Can also, yeah, it can also inhibit a seal. So please don't do that unless you are literally using the wax, which you shouldn't be. Don't do it. 
All right. Uh, so don't, there you go. Uh, let's see. What's the next question here, Holly? How do you get all of the roots out of the ground when digging in the, uh, the weed up? It seems like you would have to dig up the entire garden. Yeah, so you just want to dig out as much of the root as possible. You're not going to get. You're everything. not going to get everything. You're not. You don't. <laughs> you need like an excavator to do that. No, you just as much as visible. So as much as possible, as much as visible. Don't lose your mind tracing a root all the way around your soil. Just uh, as much as possible. And then repetitively, yeah. uh, sooner or later, repetitively, you'll end up getting all the roots because it's gonna. You're gonna continue to pull out the weed, and mm -hmm. you'll you'll get it that way. Okay. Uh, can you explain to me? What is black soil? Um, sure. So black soil is, it has contained a high percentage of humus and a high percentage of phosphoric acids, phosphorus, and ammonia. So it's just a very, a very uh, nutrient dense soil. Humus is a, a growing medium essentially. And when it's black soil, it just means it has a, it's a very high for fertile soil that is going to be easy to grow in uh was which what you want to you know compost you get that uh that color of that blackness which is an indication that it can be very very um rich uh with nutrients yeah so humus is actually another word for finished compost essentially so once all the not natural organic materials such as leaves food scraps garden waste what have you is broken down that is humus and it's that dark nutrient rich um moisture retentive soil well that brings us to the next question here i've tried growing in compost but it always seems to that the water doesn't flow through it very well the compost gets hard and nothing really grows very well maybe it's the type of compost i'm using i get compost from the local nursery and it comes in a giant bag any advice thank you um sure so you want to mix in some potting soil with the compost and then use mulch to keep it from drying out. Yeah, it fast. seems like the drying out part is the issue here because yeah. we've had that. We've had very loose, fluffy compost. When kept moist, there was no, you know, dry up. Any soil is going to kind of do that unless it's like potting soil. It's going to, that brick. But if you keep it moist or, you know, you incorporate what you're talking about, potting soil or sand or something, um, you know, organic matter to break up some of those particles so it doesn't bond so tightly when it dries out. The, the drying out is the, the problem here. Right. So, yeah, you want to use the mulch. You want to maybe mix in some potting soil, what have you. Okay, so our next question is, is I need help coming to terms of soil testing. I have seven raised beds and a few fruit trees. One local extension office charges $15 for basic tests for each sample. It's a good price, but if I were to test all my spaces, it would get expensive quickly. Are there any good, good bulk or DIY options? Most of the beds were created and filled as we were able to fill, so the soil we're able to use the soil each time of them is pretty much different. So they were filled different times. Right. As as, yeah. as financial financial ability was given, they just got soil right. and filled. Yeah. Okay, so it's an investment. In order to know exactly what um, one has, you need a soil test. Fifteen dollars for a test. You may think, you know, it seems it like a lot, but if you have multiple areas, your local university extension is probably going to be the most cost effective. And it's they're they're going and, and based on how much money you want to put towards a test, will determine how many analyzations and what they're testing for. Uh, you know, you get your basic pH level testing. Then you can also pay a little bit more and get a test that they have, you know, specific nutrients. Is, in it or if there's toxicities in it but your local university there are online uh, facilities where you can buy an item off the big a store and you buy it and you fill the thing up and you send it up to their lab and they email you back the results which is great fine wonderful but uh local is probably best when it comes to to soil testing um whenever you know it, it 15 dollars yes it costs a little bit but it's a peace of mind knowing what you should and should. And in the long run, if it says you're adding too much of this, you can stop adding that and save the money from adding that. Or if you need to add something, get everything to where. And you, and this is not an every year thing, Holly. This is about every three to five years you need to do this. I guess. So the way I look at it is, yes, it is a cost, right? But you you made an investment in your soil, in your yard. If, you, if you're growing in the ground, you made an investment in raised beds or containers, what have you 
containers aren't as concerning as much as like raised beds or around fruit trees. That's right. another investment. So because a fruit tree can last fifty years, right? Definitely. So sometimes an investment is also also meaning maintaining, like maintaining your soil, um, and that would include getting a soil test. Right. So with that, we are out of time, and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the program today? Would you like to revisit in its entirety? Well, you can do that by going to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, and clicking on the Radio Season Five tab at the top of the page, or you can send us an email to GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com, and we will send you the link to this program. Or if you miss past programs, uh, we'll throw those in there for free, too. It's all free service that what we provide for you. Uh, you can uh, tune in next week. Don't miss the program. We were going to talk about mulch as well as strawberries after the harvest, what you can do with that harvest of strawberries. We'll give you a bunch of different ideals for uh, preserving, storing, utilizing them, because uh, now it's strawberry season, as well as our good friend, Author and radio host from Nova Scotia, Canada, Nikki Jabor will be with us and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. Mm-hmm.